Implement site reporting. Implement site reporting. This is clear. Stand by for site reporting. Have you received an LMPI? A presumed intercontinental ballistic missile, an ICBM, just launched from North Korean territory. Space-based radar sound the alarm. Now, this team at Clear Space Force Station in Alaska must quickly verify it with their ground-based radar. System status. System stable. Copy and concur. This is clear. Site report is valid. Number of objects is one. This North Korea launch is just a drill, declassified for VOA to show how Clear Space Force Station serves as a virtual detection shield. We like to say that we're the 300 on this base protecting the 300 million. But Deputy Base Commander Major Dave Kim tells me those launches are part of life here. with North Korea firing 16 ballistic missiles this year, including an ICBM test that CLEAR confirmed in March. We're watching them 24-7. We see what they do. I like to describe this job as a no-fail mission. There is zero room for error, absolutely not. ICBM payloads separate in space, creating complex debris fields. The Space Force Station's current ground-based radar can track space objects up to 5,000 kilometers away. But the image isn't clear, making it difficult to pick out an incoming warhead. So the U.S. government built a $1.5 billion tool for its tracking arsenal, the new Long Range Discrimination Radar, or LRDR. VOA got a rare look inside LRDR. The technology in these panels, officials say, make it the most sophisticated radar on the planet. LRDR is able to look into that adversarial threat cloud and differentiate which object is the warhead that we want to hit. If I could compare it to anything, it would be, uh, you know, watching regular TV versus 4K or 8K. But tracking alone won't stop a missile. We have to do a, a hit to kill, and that's something we can do. Lieutenant Colonel Chris Stutz commands the Missile Defense Battalion at Fort Greeley, Alaska, overseeing soldiers who protect 40 of these ICBM killing missiles, known as ground-based interceptors, in silos deep underground. We'll see that incoming threat, and if we are authorized to engage it, our weapon system will send a, uh, a task plan, if you will, to however many uh, missiles that we need to service that incoming threat. These uh, clamshells will explode open, and that missile will, will launch. To date, interceptors have hit just 10 of 19 targets, a 53% success rate. But Ian Williams of the Center for Strategic and International Studies calls that misleading. If you actually drill down, right, a lot of the tests' failures were in very early prototype models that are not the models that are currently deployed today. In, in fact, if you look at the, the, the kill vehicle models that are on the interceptors today, there's only been one failure. The government just constructed 20 new silos here. VOA is the first news outlet to go inside one. Take a look at this. This is the inside of one of the new missile silos that's going to house the next generation interceptor. Those should be operational around 2028, and they're going to be a more advanced version of the current interceptors here at Fort Greeley. The biggest advancement, each new next generation interceptor, or NGI, housed here will have multiple kill vehicles, the part of the missile used to take out a warhead. And what that means is, by having multiple kill vehicles on one interceptor, you don't have to fire as many interceptors at a single object. A reassurance as threats from North Korea continue. And these bases, nestled in the Alaskan wilderness, remain America's last line of defense. Carla Babb, VOA News, Fort Greeley, Alaska.